Hi students, this is Alex here. In this video, we are going to verify Gauss divergence theorem for the given f vector over the surface of the cuboid bounded by the equations of the plane which is x equal to 0, x equal to a, y equal to 0, y equal to b, z equal to 0 and z equal to c. Now, let's write the Gauss divergence theorem which is double integral over the surface s f vector dot n cap ds equal to triple integral over the volume v del dot f vector dv. Now let's construct the diagram given by these equations of the plane for the cuboid. So cuboid we have a rectangle region like this and same size I have to take here and I have to join these edges that is vertices to complete the cuboid. Then after completing this we are going to draw three dimensional axis along the vertices so that we can name this as x axis and we have y axis and we have z axis so mutually perpendicular axis is this is our z and we have unit vector i cap along x axis j cap along y axis and k cap along z axis and let's mark the vertex that is this is origin this is a and its point is a comma 0 comma 0 because this point is at a distance a from the origin so this is our a in the same way this is b which is 0 comma b comma 0 and it is at a distance b from the origin and this point is c which is 0 comma 0 comma c and it is at a distance c from the origin and rest of the vertices we can name already we have o a b c then d e f g now coming to the lhs of the gauss divergence theorem we have double integral over the surface f vector dot n cap ds now we have six surfaces so first i will take the bottom surface so which is double integral f vector dot when we consider this bottom surface and n cap is a unit vector which is going away from the surface in this direction which is exactly opposite direction that of k so this will be dot minus k cap and this surface is having the x value and the y value so this ds is dx into dy and the equation of this plane is z equal to 0 so when we take the limit x limit is 0 to a and y limit is from 0 to b in the same way if we take the top surface we have again 0 to a and 0 to b for x and y it is f vector dot now top surface is this region and n cap will be pointing upward along the k direction so it will be dot 
k vector k cap alone and we have dx dy and this plane equation is z is equal to c so here the equation of the plane is z equal to 0 here it is z is equal to c now coming to the left surface double integral f dot this left side surface is nothing but this region and n cap will be pointing in this direction which is opposite to that of j cap and it is having the dimension x and z and the equation of this plane is y equal to 0. So it is having y equal to 0, it is opposite of j and it is having x and z. So 0 to a, 0 to c and in the right side surface, once again 0 to a, 0 to c, f vector dot j and it is dx dz. So this equation is y equal to 0 and this is y is equal to b. So we can see y equal to b here. So this is a right side surface and this equation is y equal to b. Now considering the front surface and the back surface, front surface is double integral f vector and if I take the n cap for the front surface, this is the front surface. So this front surface will have a n cap pointing outward. It will be along the i direction. So it is dot i cap and this front surface is having the values y and z. So this is our y and this is our z. And the equation of this front surface is z is equal to, sorry, x is equal to a. So we write x is equal to a. So this will be x is equal to a and it is having y and z. It is having this is y and z. So its limits are from 0 to b and 0 to c. In the same way double integral and the back side surface will have minus i cap and rest of the things are same dy dz and this is from 0 to b and this is from 0 to c. Now we are going to evaluate each part by taking the first two part as i1. Now i1 is having double integral 0 to a and 0 to b f dot minus k f is having the components x square i cap plus y square j cap plus z square k cap. So when I do dot with k we have only z square. So it is minus z square and here it is dx dy. So it is dx dy and the second part is double integral 0 to a 0 to b z square dx dy and the corresponding equation of the plane is z is equal to 0 z is equal to c here z is equal to 0 here z is equal to c so when we substitute the value of z as 0 here the first part will become 0 and the second part we have to substitute so this will become double integral 0 to a 0 to b c square dx dy now we have to integrate with respect to x first. So this will be integral 0 to b 
c square into x and the limit for x is 0 to a and dy. When we put the upper limit, this will become c square a alone and we have integral 0 to b dy. Now, when we integrate this, it will become y and our limit is from 0 to b. So, it is c square a b. Now, taking i to the next 2 integral, which is f dot minus j dx dz. So, it is from 0 to a, 0 to c, double integral, 0 to a, 0 to c, f dot minus j will become only minus y square and it is dx into dz. In the same way, the next part will be 0 to a, 0 to c, y square dx dz and the equation is y is equal to 0, y is equal to b. So, y is equal to 0, y is equal to b. When y is 0, the first part is fully 0 and the second part will become double integral 0 to a, 0 to c, b square dx dz and this first integration we are going to evaluate with respect to x. So, it will be b square x and limit is from 0 to a. We have integral 0 to c dz. Now, after using the limit, we get b square into a integral 0 to c dz. And now, it is b square a and it will become z from 0 to c after putting the limit b square a c. And coming to the third part i3, the last would be part f dot i. So, it is i3 which is double integral f dot i is x square and we have dy dz. dy dz and here x is equal to a is the equation and its limit is from 0 to b, 0 to c. And second part, same thing, but minus, minus y square, sorry, minus x square dy dz, 0 to b, 0 to c. Here the equation is x is equal to 0. The first part is minus because we have, sorry, the second part is minus because we have f dot minus i cap. So, we have substituted that. Now, substituting this, we get double integral 0 to b, 0 to c, a square, dy, dz and this entire part is 0. Now, first part we have to integrate with respect to y. So, that gives a square y and I have to use a limit 0 to b for y and still we have integral 0 to c and dz. Now, using the limit, we get a square b, then we have integral 0 to c dz and this integration is a square b into z. Limit is from 0 to c. So, it is a square bc. Now, we are going to combine i1, i2, i3. The first answer is c square a b c square a b second answer is b square a c b square a c and third is a square b c we can take a b c common so we left with c plus b plus a and rearranging this we get a b c into a plus b plus C. Now, coming to the right hand side of the Gauss divergence theorem, we have triple integral over volume V del dot f vector dv. Now, this part is triple integral and del is i cap into dou by dou x plus j cap into dou by dou y plus 
k cap into do by do z with this dot of x square i cap plus y square j cap plus z square k cap and dv. dv is nothing but dx, dy, dz and the corresponding limits for x is 0 to a, y is 0 to b, z is 0 to c. Now, we take the integral along with the limits and now the first part is i cap and i cap we do the dot product this will become dou by dou x of x square and dou by dou y of y square and dou by dou z of z square and at the end we have dx dy dz so on partial derivative of this we get 2x plus 2y plus 2z into dx dy dz integral 0 to a integral 0 to b integral 0 to c and now first part we have to evaluate the integral with respect to x so 2x becomes 2x square by 2 and this is a constant so into x this is another constant then into x and we have to use a limit 0 to a for x and the rest of the terms remain as it is along the integral and the limits. So here we can cancel this 2 and 2. When I use a limit, it will become a square plus 2ya plus 2za into dy. We have integral 0 to b. Then another integral 0 to c and tz. Here when we use a lower limit, everything is 0. And now we are going to integrate this with respect to y alone. So the first term will become a square y. Second term 2a y square by 2. And third term 2za y. And the limit is from 0 to b. Still we have integral 0 to c dz. After substituting the limit we get a square b plus after cancelling this it is a b square plus 2 z a b and lower limit is 0 and we have integral from 0 to c d z and here integrating with respect to z so this is constant so into z this is again constant so into z and this 2 a b is a constant and z is z square by 2 can cancel this and the limit is from 0 to a now using the limit sorry limit is from 0 to c so using the limit we get a square b into c plus a b square c plus a b c square we can take a b c common this gives a plus b plus c so we find LHS equal to RHS. So LHS equal to RHS. Hence, Gauss divergence theorem is verified.